otherwise known as mystery of diamonds and welcome to my channel if you're new here hi y'all okay so we see the special nails right so that means it's time for another specials video okay so this is my next whipping chat for smashing the specials which is a collaboration that i am doing with mindy from mindy's diamond moment and I am going to unbox the very last of my uh, purchases that I have for this event. I've been getting through quite a lot, but I still have a lot to go. So, whoo, we shall see. All right, so let's get into what I have gotten. Okay. Well... Okay. <laughs> oh, no. No. It came off. No. Get back on there, plastic. Get back on there. All right. So, I got me a canvas. All right. So, I'm going to show you uh, a toolkit. This is a semi-basic toolkit. You have the pink wax. You have the green boat. You have a pink pen. And in this case, it gives you these little plastic tweezers, which, you know, if you're, if you're new and you're doing special drills, these will work. Um, I just, I tend to, if I'm going to use tweezers, uh, I usually tend to use my blunt tip tweezers, either these or the ones from Treasure Studios Arts because, or Treasure Studios Art because they, they just, they work better, they're sturdier. All right, so let's put the drills to the side. So this is the first canvas that I got. I couldn't resist this one. Because I have a Dotson and um, actually I have two of them. And so this kind of reminds me, it looks just like him, especially when he gives me that little quizzical look that he gives me. <laughs> and okay, I got to point out something funny, right? Y'all see this is a dog, but look what the product name says. Penguin. I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's not a penguin. <laughs> Sorry, I found that kind of hilarious. And um, if you see with this one, um, you see this is a full drill, okay? But you can see that there's different shape. Like it's not just one size rhinestones. And that's what gives it this like bubble effect. And it is so, so cute. Look at that little face. Look at that face. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so... This one has 15 things. Now, I'm I'm trying to see. I, I think these are all going to be rhinestones, just rhinestones of different sizes. But uh, let's see. Let's, let's get into the drills and, and see what it looks like. Oh, sorry. Crinkle alert. Two bags or two trains. All right. So, how many did we say we were supposed to have? We're supposed to have 15. And, okay. So, yeah. All right. So, let's look at these colors. So, we have a red rhinestone, purple. This is another red. We have a blue. Ooh. Now, see, here's where you get the, it's the, the bigger rhinestone. So, this is like a teal. And then here you have the, what I call medium-sized rhinestone teal. And then here's your small one. See, so they put these three sizes so that it gives it that bubble effect. And then here we have the big yellow, the medium yellow, and the small yellow. And then in this pack... We have green. Um, now, this is just a regular black, right? You know, it does it. And this is what helps uh, the colors and the rhinestones pop. Then we have a, have a, a dark red, a purple, and a, like, a green. All right. 
so I thought that this was a really cute picture. Like I said, I got this specifically because this looks like my little puppy. Alright, so let me... Let me clean this up and I'll get back and I'll show you the next one. Okay, so we're back with our next canvas. Now this is one that I kept seeing and kept seeing and I, I debated because I, I do love these and I finally said, you know what, this is the perfect time to get it. It is a little dragon special drill. I mean, look, look, look at that baby. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Y'all knew I'd have to find me a dragon one somewhere, right? Um, and once again, I, I these have these do have some special drills. Most of it is um, rhinestones, but uh, you can see there's going to be some little special drills right here, uh, as is little clausies. But and this one's a partial. Um, if you don't know what it, you know, the, it means this part right here is is not drilled. It's just the little dragon. Oh my gosh, he's just so cute. Okay, so let's take a look at the drills. Crinkle alert. Oh, okay. So. I've never I'm, uh, individually packaged. So we have an orange, a teal, a red, yellow, green. Here's a, I call this like a, this is like a Christmas green. And then we have the special drill, which is what his little claws are going to be, which is this yellow uh, iridescent AB or marquee. AB just means it has this little coating on the outside of it. Oh, that's going to be so cute. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I really hope I draw the number for this one soon because I want to do this one. I want to do this one. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So... And this one wouldn't take a big frame to frame it, right? You know, just a small little bitty frame. Oh my goodness, he'll go perfect here in my craft room. So yeah, this one's this one's this one's a gift for myself for Christmas. I, I may I may do it and wrap it up and unbox uh, and and unwrap it for myself come 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 Christmas. Or it might maybe I'll do it for my birthday. You know, maybe I'll I'll give myself a little birthday present, um, which you know is next month. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm getting close to yeah i don't even want to say the age y'all i don't want to say the age <laughs> okay so i'm gonna pack this one up and then we'll get on to the next one okay and this is the very last one of the um canvases that i got and i do promise you all the stuff that i just unboxed i will have a link down in the description that shows you where i've gotten this from because some of these that I've gotten, I have gotten from the Etsy store Diamond Painting Bliss, which <gasps> just love because it is a place to shop for all of your special needs, needs, special project needs. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and whew, I have to watch out because when I don't have money, you know, I got to not go shopping on there because I keep seeing stuff that I want. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay. So let's see what this one is. Alright. Oh look at her. Is she not gorgeous? I mean oh she is just this beautiful woman. You know, you've got her hair, you've got what looks like flowers and stuff in her hair. And oh my gosh. She is going to be beautiful. Look at that beautiful face. And I love, love, love this little, I don't know what you call it. It's like a, like a headdress kind of thing. Oh, 
And you can see there's going to be special drills as well as rhinestones. Oh, and look, this necklace. This necklace is like almost, I mean, it's got some rhinestones, but a lot of your special drills are hiding right there. <gasps> okay, so let's look at the drills and see what we get in here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, crinkle alert. Okay, so we have a purple rhinestone. Oh, look at this bright pink rhinestone. This is a, like a, what I call like a dusty blue. Ooh, and here's a like a bright tealish blue. Oh, here comes our special drills. We got us some pink marquee. Oh, some of my favorite marquees. These are what I call the iridescent marquees, you know, because they're like, they're white, but they shine like all the different colors. Oh, love it. Oh, and then we got some, we got some more of them. Are they, the, is it the same? No? Maybe they're different size. Or this, these have a little bit more of a pink tinge to it. I think that's what it is. These have more of a pink tinge. And then we have our little pearl half domes look at those oh my goodness <gasps> y'all y'all she's gonna turn out beautiful oh oh my goodness i can't wait to do her as well i see i want to do them all i want to do them all like now you know if i could somehow like replicate myself and do all of them at the same time i would but <laughs> i can't so all right, so let me put this one up and get our last couple. Okay, so here's our next one. We've got some more keychains. So I just kind of left the, the toolkit. See, this toolkit actually comes with little baggies. All right, so let's take a look. I found these keychains, and it was a two set for, um, I think it was like $14.99. I'll have to double check off Amazon. But, like, look at these. These are like mandalas you know and with keychains you know you drill both sides of them and i'm telling you i am loving these keychains these are going to be perfect to give to my co-workers and this one you know these are made out of that like acrylic um so you know i will make sure if you are giving these away for gifts you do want to make sure that you are sealing them because you don't want the diamonds to to come off and then you have this mandala. Ooh, look at that one. Ooh, sorry for the glare, y'all. This one's pretty. This one's like a yellow and blue. And then we have this one. I think this one's probably one of my favorite ones because it kind of looks like a flower within a flower. <gasps> Ooh, okay. And if you've never seen the, the keychains, they come with these little lobster claws and these ball chains for you to be able to put them on and use as, like, they don't have to use it as a keychain, right? They can uh, use it as a purse pull or decorate whatever they want to. All right, so let's look at the drills. Crinkle alert. All right, we're going to save those for the end. So let's look at our rhinestones. Doubled up there. Okay, so we have a pink rhinestone. Clear. Here's a turquo turquoise blue. I can't talk today. We have a light lavender. We have a yellow. Here's a little bit darker pink. And this is like a very bright uh, green. So let's look at the specials. These are some of my favorites. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness. Oh, I got me some shards. Here's some red shards. And, oh, I'm going to be in shard heaven, I guess. <laughs> some little turquoise shards. And some purple shards. Ooh, here's some of my favorites. This is like that, that reddish, bluish, purplish marquee. We have the AB Red Teardrops. Ooh, I don't think I've had any of the Pearl Iridescent Teardrops. I don't, I may have. I've been doing so many, I just don't know. And then we have blue, uh, like AB Teardrops. Oh my gosh, these are going to look so pretty. 
<gasps> okay, so let me set these to the side so we can get our second set out. Crinkle alert. Okay, so I got some more of the cupcakes. But, looks like these are going to be the same as the other cupcakes I did. They come in the cardboard rather than the acrylic. <sighs> so, my next mission are to find cupcake keychains that are not cardboard. Yeah. But, okay. So, we have this cupcake. This one, this one, and this one. Uh oh, what's that? What's this? What's, what's, what's hanging out on my on my cupcake? I don't know what that was. Okay, so let's look at the drills here. Crinkle alert. So, we're going to start at this end. Okay. So, these are, like, it, it. these are not black. These are the silver, and they just have a black backing. Then, these, these are not yellow rhinestones. These are actually um, metallic faceted beads, and they have, like, this um, clear on the back, but they are so pretty. And then we have a turquoise. Here's our yellow. You have pink. And then you got a dustier pink. A kind of a skyish blue. We got a, a purple. Oh, here we go with some pink domes. And then we have some uh, pearl domes. And then we have, okay, if I can pick it up. We have some blue teardrops, and we have some of that pink-purple teardrops. I love when they do this, like where it's that multicolored. <gasps> All right, so let me put this up, and then we will get on to the whipping chat. Okay, so welcome back. So before I get into the whipping chat, and as you can see, this is the beautiful canvas that I drew to be able to do. I'm, I'm really, I'm so looking forward to this one because I was so excited to get this one. Um, but before I start the whipping chat, I want to remind you that you want to stay tuned to the end of the video, guys, because that's when I give my uh, announcement for who has won this week's whipping chat prize for smashing the specials on my channel so you want to stay tuned for that guys okay so uh let me let me choose a color first and then we will get on with it um sorry i was trying to find the number one all right kind of what i thought that i would talk about is it's it's special in that it was something that was uh, very unique and it doesn't happen to a lot of people and it was my very first one. Um, when I was pregnant with my first child, um, you know, you have so many expectations of what you expect, you know, your first pregnancy to be like, you know, your first delivery and whatnot. But this thing is, is that I almost died in with my first child. And what that is, is that I, I had what's called preeclampsia. Okay. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's where your body retains all this, this water weight, right? And so you like swell up like the Oompa Loompa, you know, or like the girl, oh, I can't remember her name now that in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know, she, <laughs> she blew up like a blueberry. Um, 
So the thing is, is that with it being my first child, I, you know, I, I was, I noticed that I was swelling. So I called the, the doctor, you know, and they're like, oh yes, yes, some swelling is normal. Don't worry about that. Uh, you have an appointment with us soon, you know, so we'll see you then and we'll take a look. And I was like, okay, you know, I didn't think anything else of it. I was like, hmm, okay, swelling is normal. And as soon as I walked into the doctor's office, the uh, midwife just happened to be at the check-in counter. She takes one look at me and she says, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh, go straight to the hospital. And I'm like, what? She's like, you should have told me you were this swollen. And I'm like, well, I don't know. You, I said swollen and you know, you said that's normal. And she's like, well, you should have told me you were this. I was like, I didn't know what normal swelling was. Like, come on, this is my first child. Um, you know, and I'm like, I, I had been going through all the regular things, you know, we were enrolled in a Lamaze class and, you know, uh, actually we were scheduled within that next week to be going up to the hospital to, to look at the labor and delivery wards and all that good kind of stuff. And, I was like, what? So she said, nope, I want you to go to the hospital right now. So I get to the hospital and they immediately admit me and start drawing blood and taking tests and whatnot. And they said, basically, here's the deal. Your body has retained all of this water weight because I basically had gained 13 pounds of pure water weight in one week's time, which is, oof, it's, it, it, yeah, I, I, I looked like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I was, you know, my fingers were all swollen. I couldn't, I couldn't grip past this. Yeah, it was, it was bad and it was getting worse. Um, and they're like, how, you know, how many more weeks I had like um, I had like three and a half weeks still left to go in my pregnancy and they're like, mm, okay, so we're going to keep you here on bed rest until that happens. So, you know, I thought, well, okay, I guess I'm going to be in a prolonged hospital stay. And my husband's like, okay, so you're going to be here for a while. So I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go and get you a uh, DVD player and, uh, or sorry, VHS. You hear him in the background. He had to correct me. Sorry. It was a VHS player. Um, so he got me a VHS, black, our VHS player. He brought me, um, like my puzzle books and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I didn't know about diamond painting because that didn't exist at the time. Um, my music, you know, he was, he was getting me all set up and ready, uh, to, to be in the hospital for an extended stay. Um, and he'd been, you know, staying up there with me and everything. And his mom had called him and said, you know, son, why don't you take a break, come and have some breakfast, you know, and then you can go back up there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, go have breakfast with your mom. No problem. He's like, all right. So he leaves to go have breakfast at his mom's house. And he had not left the room for very long before the doctor came in and said, okay, here's the deal. Your liver levels are not good. And, um, you know, the, the problem is, is that we don't have the capabilities if we have to deliver you um, for a premature baby here at this hospital as of yet. So we are going to transfer you to a hospital in Pensacola, which was two hours away. And of course I started panicking. I'm like, what, what, what? And they're like, you know, the goal is we want to keep the baby in you as long as possible, you know. And so they have the, the best chance of making that happen. But we've got to do something because you, you are not faring well. And 
So, of course, I freak out. So, I, I, you know, I managed to get a hold of Wayne. Like, literally, he had just gotten his, his plate. He had not even taken a bite. And I told him they're, they're moving me to Pensacola. And he's like, oh, my gosh. Okay, so, you know, he dropped everything to come up there. And, of course, you know, um, he had contacted my mom, and uh, who lives in another state, to let her know, you know, the condition that I was going to be stuck in the hospital for a while um, prior to all this. And so she had decided to uh, come and visit me. And, um, you know, she just happened to have gotten the phone call from, I think he called her and let her know that they were moving me in. She's like, I'm going to, I'm going to follow you there. Um, so, you know they wouldn't let him ride in the ambulance and so he he followed behind so that he could be there at the hospital you know when i got there now i still haven't hit like any kind of strange realizations at this point um so we're we're sitting in the room waiting for the doctor the doctor comes in and like doesn't even approach me right looks at my mom and my husband and what he said next is what actually kind of brought it all forward that there that this was serious because he looked at my husband and my mom and he said you know we're pretty sure we can save the baby because you know we've been able to save babies at less gestation than this like 24 and a half weeks uh 25 weeks gestation so we're pretty sure we can save the baby but we're just not sure if we can save the mom um i was kind of in shock at that point because that was literally the first time that it hit me that i may die that i may not make it through this my husband's reaction of course is he grabbed the doctor by the coat and pushed him up against the wall and and his feet off the ground and said you will save my wife um you know and i'm kind of like in shock at this whole thing you know my mom's kind of like oh my gosh oh my gosh and um when i finally my husband came back to me um I, I was kind of crying, but I said, you know, if something happens and they have to make a decision between me or the baby, please choose the baby, you know, and he's like, baby, no, 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 And I'm like, I, you, you better save the baby. Um, he said, well, it's not going to come to that because this doctor is going to save you. <laughs> um, so I know it was just as scary for him as it was for me at that moment. And so, of course, you know, he calls uh, all of our family members, both sides, my side, his side, because, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with me. And, you know, we didn't know if it was going to be the last time they were going to get an opportunity to see me. So both sides of our family i had so many people come and visit me uh in the hospital uh during this time to see me and i'm just like kind of overwhelmed if you know what i mean you know i was i, I was trying to process everything they were trying to keep the baby in me but when they realized that my my levels were just not going to support that and it, it didn't matter what i wanted they they just weren't gonna even out so they made the decision that because the, the only cure for toxemia is to have the baby get the baby out um and so i can remember they they said okay we're gonna give you this stuff called pitocin now you know here here's me in my little newbie state i was like oh, okay so i'm gonna get to experience what like natural like you know contractions you know because they told us you know the pitocin's gonna start your delivery or start your labor uh you're gonna feel contractions and whatnot so i'm thinking you know i'm gonna feel contractions five and ten minutes apart and all that goody goodness yeah no mm -hmm, nope mm -hmm, that's not what happened 
um, the contractions started coming. They started coming hard, fast, and, and, and like really close together. And it was funny because there was a part where, you know, they have me hooked up to uh, this little monitor that can monitor the size of the contractions. And there was a point where my husband got like really fascinated with this uh, contraption. And he's looking at the monitor. I'm feeling it, right? And he's looking at the monitor going, ooh, baby, this is a big one. And I'm like, yeah, I can kind of tell that. <laughs> and that's when he's like, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So, you know, he'd look at the monitor when he'd see a big one was coming. Uh, you know, he'd come over by me and hold my hand. And he'd try to talk me through it and calm me through it. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, no, 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 no. I want, I, you know, I want an epidural. I want an epidural. And the, the people came in and they're like, well, here's this thing. You have to go through this video and whatnot. And I'm like, I don't care. You know what? Roll the video player, whatever you have to in here. Give me the paper in my hand. I will sign it. I will watch it. I don't care. But you better get it in here and get it in here now. Um, you know, and they looked at my husband and he's like, mm, yeah, I would suggest getting it in here now. <laughs> Um, so they get it in here. I mean, I signed the papers before, I, you know, at this point I, I was willing to sign whatever I needed to sign because it hurt and I was a wimp. Um, and I was like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. So, uh, finally they gave me the epidural. You know, I can remember looking at the anesthesiologist and telling him I loved him because I was like, oh, thank you. Um, but my body reacts very quickly with uh, Pitocin, which is why it, everything kind of started pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, so it, it didn't take long and um, my child was born. And it was so amazing because the nurse that was on duty when I went into the labor and delivery room, her shift was actually over, but she decided that she wanted to stay right there by my side until the baby was born she didn't care that her shift was over and i'm telling you that was super special to me you know that she was taking her own personal time to stay there with me and i i you know i i will forever be grateful to her for that um and so i i only got a chance to you know they held my baby up for a brief moment and then they they whisked her off to this um NICU which they they have an amazing uh what they call a, a level three step down NICU unit uh to be able to take care of special cases um and things like that and of course you know my husband went immediately to go check on her he's like I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna go check on her I'll make sure everything's okay she's got everything she's supposed to have and what all they're doing to her and I'm like Okay, um, because I had found out that they weren't going to let me leave this labor and delivery room for about two days because even though I delivered the baby, um, they there were still milestones and levels that I had to pass before I could be uh, transferred and then before I could be released. So he goes and he visits the baby. He goes like probably four or no maybe it was three times and by like the third time he came in there um the the nurse is taking care of chris uh looked at him and said all right listen you are not allowed back in here until you take a picture of your baby to your wife you know you've come in here and you visited you visited and you, you know your wife hasn't even had a chance to see the baby <laughs> So he took a Polaroid picture and oh my gosh, y'all, like he took a picture with his arm like this and the baby was like, and like she only came like from his fingertips to about like right here. Um, cause she was four pounds, 14 ounces and she was, she was very tiny. Um, and you know, so he brings me the pictures and, um, you know, I'm seeing all the, the, wiring and the contraptions and whatnot that that she has on her you know and i'm i'm terrified obviously you know i want everything to be okay with her um and you know like i said all of my family members were visiting and uh the doctor decided once again to come into the room and bring all of my family members out in the hallway but he left the door open like so i could hear right 
Um, I mean, maybe I wasn't supposed to hear. I'm pretty sure I wasn't supposed to hear, but I could hear. And what I heard was he told all of them, all right, listen to me. She is still in a very delicate condition. We could still lose her. Under no circumstances are you to upset her. She cannot have any stress. Do, do you understand me? None. Because we don't want to lose her. And right now we're in a battle fighting to keep her. All right. Now, see, here's the thing. In my brain, you know, and, and, and I don't know why it jumped to this, but this is what it jumped to. When I heard the doctor say that, the first thing that popped into my head was that my baby was dead and because they didn't want to lose me and didn't want to upset me, they didn't want anybody to tell me. You know, I don't, I don't know why my brain jumped to that conclusion, but that was the conclusion that I jumped to. So, of course, I start screaming and pitching a fit which of course then everybody rushes in they're all telling me to calm down and all i can say is oh my god my baby's dead and you can't tell me because you don't want to upset me my baby's dead and i'm like screaming and crying and in hysterics and you know the doctor's trying to calm me down he's like you've got to calm down you've got to calm down and uh one of the nurses uh ran down to the nicu and got the nurse that was taking care of my child and I mean I don't know exactly how long it took but I swear it didn't feel like it took very long at all like she must have ran and she gets into the room and you know she's trying to talk sense to me and you know and I'm being incoherent and babbling and whatnot and she's like you have got to calm down you have got to calm down if you do not calm down you will not live to see your baby I am taking care of your baby I promise you your baby is alive safe you know we're taking good care of her but you have got to calm down or you're not gonna see her and you know finally you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at her and I'm like, no, you're just saying that. And she's like, all right, listen, listen, I will make you a deal. If I am lying and I am just saying this, then when, if, if your baby is dead, I give you full permission to punch me square in the face, which of course, you know, this made me laugh, right? You know, and I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, I'm telling you in front of everybody here. If I am wrong and I am lying to you and your baby is dead, you can punch me as hard as you want to in my face. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of got me calmed down because I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a crazy thing to say, but okay. And she said, now make you another promise. Before they transfer you, as long as you keep calm, you got to stay calm. You got to stay alive and fight this. As long as you do that, before they take you to your regular room, I will take you to see your baby. And, we're, and she's like, we're not supposed to do that, but I will do that. And, you know, that calmed me down. And I was like, okay, okay. She's like, but you've got to do everything that they tell you to do so that we can get you transferred. All right. I was like, okay. So finally, the day comes when I get to be transferred to a regular room. And as promised, she took me by the NICU um, and this was my first chance to actually see my baby, like, you know, in person. And she, oh my gosh, y'all, it was so, so small. Um, and, you know, all these wires. And she had this thing called a CPAP on her. Um, because when they're born that premature, the, the little, uh, the lungs, the, the sticky stuff in the lungs that helped the lungs to expand and contract um, and not stick together was not developed yet. So they needed that on uh, to be able to help with that. And, you know, I could not, I was not allowed to, to pick her up. They had her in this little cubicle thing, um, which was like a little makeshift womb. And they had uh, her swaddled and they... Um, they had, they said, we do want you to touch her. Touch is very healing, you know, but you can rub her back or whatnot. So instead of getting to hold my baby, you know, I had to, I had to rub her back and I did. And I would go and visit, um, her all the time. 
Now, the thing is, is that when they put me back in my regular room, um, they put me in a room where I could hear next door the the lady that had her baby in the room with her and you know when you're going through to have a first child you know you, you picture that you're going to be in that hospital room with your baby right there with you you know and this was my first child and I didn't I didn't have that experience and I would hear that baby cry and of course I would cry and whatnot um you know and everybody tried to keep me comforted you know and and I did get to go see her um very feisty, I'll tell you that much, because uh, all of the uh, IVs that they had, you know, they, they had put them in her hand, she knocked them out, put them in her feet, she knocked them out. So they put the IV, the only place that they could, where she wouldn't knock it out, and that was in the top of her head. So I have a picture where I am holding my baby for the very first time, and I look as terrified and stiff as you could be because, whoops, oh, there one, that one, that one popping, because I'm holding my baby, right, and my baby has an IV coming straight out of her head, so I am, like, being very careful because the last thing I wanted to do was accidentally yank that IV out of her head, and I was like, no, 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 um, and she was supposed to be in the hospital, you know, for the rest of her gestation. But, I mean, she was passing milestones left and right. She was making the weight. And so, she actually got to go home at 11 days rather than the three and a half weeks. But, I'll tell you, when they released me from the hospital, you know, when she's still in the NICU... Um, I was still swollen and, um, luckily for us, this hospital had a Ronald McDonald house right across the street. And y'all, if you don't know anything about the Ronald McDonald houses, these houses are set up so that if parents have children that are in, uh, either ICUs, hospital, NICU, what have you, um, they have these rooms for you to stay in and you don't have to pay anything. You know, you can choose to donate if you want, but they don't charge you anything. Uh, these church groups come and bring food because they know that you probably haven't eaten. I mean, I can't say enough good things about the Ronald McDonald house, um, because they, they saved us, you know, they allowed us to be able to have a place that we could literally just walk. From the Ronald McDonald house to the hospital so that we could go visit but as soon as they released me I was still swollen and I went to go lay down in the room at the Ronald McDonald house and I I felt like I couldn't breathe I felt like my legs were still heavy um you know it just didn't feel right my husband's like no no something's not right I'm taking you back up to the hospital um so he took me to the emergency room and like we sat there for I think it was like eight hours. Um, and, you know, of course, my husband's like, we got to get this water weight off you. So his, his, his solution was to drink a ton and a ton and a ton of water. Um, and I did start going to the, to the, you know, bathroom and stuff, trying to get some of the, the weight off, or the water weight off. But um, finally, after eight hours, the doctor comes in and says, all right, uh, you're already admitted. I don't know why you didn't go to labor and delivery. And I looked at him like, um, cause I'd already been released, you know? And he's like, you should have gone. This is a complication of your pregnancy. You should have gone up to labor and delivery and you wouldn't have been sitting here this long. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know. And he told my husband, he's like, all right, he goes, um, obviously she is not out of the woods yet. Um, so we need to put her back on. They had put me on this stuff. Um, magnesium sulfate, which gave me like these horrible, horrible hot flashes. And like, I felt like my skin was burning up and I was nauseous and whatnot. And I mean, I'm sitting there going, uh, uh, no, 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 I am not going back on this stuff. And the doctor didn't even look at me this time. Like he didn't even address me. He turned to my husband and said, all right, I can tell you right now, she either gets on the magnesium sulfate or she's going to die. It's as simple as that. My husband looked at me and said, if I have to tie you down, you're going to be on the magnesium sulfate. And I'm like, but I don't want to. He said, I don't care. <laughs> you're going to get on it. 
Um, so they got me on the magnesium sulfate and it didn't take too long um, for everything to start working right. And uh, I lost the water weight and I started unswelling and I could finally be released for good from the hospital. And I was so relieved, you know, so I was still going up to visit. Um, I think it was like every two hours, um, go visit my child and whatnot. But I had found out, uh, Wayne, Wayne had found out for me that the nurse that had been, uh, supposed to be off duty during my delivery, who had stayed past her time was back up at the hospital. And so both of us wanted to go and thank her, you know, um, and see, here's the thing. <laughs> When she had last saw me, I was so swollen. I mean, my face was swollen. Like, if you looked at me, I have my eyes fully open, but it looks like I'm asleep because um, my face is so swollen. Everything's swollen. So, I had lost all the water weight, so I looked very different. So, anyway, I'm walking um, there, and we find her, and I'm arm-in-arm uh, arm with Wayne, and she takes a look at me. She takes a look at Wayne. She doesn't say a word. She goes straight up to Wayne and she slaps him on the face. And I'm like, I'm like taken aback. I'm like, she's like, how dare you bring some, some, some woman into the hospital when your wife just gave birth and is, is, you know, clinging to her life and whatnot. And that's when we realized what had happened is that she did not recognize me because I wasn't swollen anymore. So Wayne and I both start laughing and she gets this confused. Like, I'm like, it's me. It's me. Um, and it took her a few minutes and she's like, oh my gosh. You know, she's like, you look so different. You know, and she gave me a hug and she apologized to Wayne. And he, he's like, no worries. I'm not upset. I understand. Um, you know, she does look different. I, I will give you that much. Um, she's like, I'm sorry. I just, I saw you. I thought you were bringing in some strange woman and holding on to her when your wife was going through what she was. And he's like, well, if I was doing that, I would deserve to be slapped, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and you know, so like I said, Chris was supposed to be in the hospital for like three and a half weeks, but was passing milestone after milestone you know at first they told us that when chris was going to get released chris was going to be with all these uh electrode home monitoring devices and whatnot and then they were like no nope, looks like uh we can take chris off these you know i don't wow you know just resilient and so instead of the three and a half weeks chris was able to go home after 11 days now the funny thing is, is that the day that Chris was released from the hospital was Halloween. And it was so cute and so funny because every place that my husband stopped, he made the joke that it's Halloween and instead of getting tricks, I got the biggest treat ever. I have my baby coming home. <laughs> And I want to say that when we got to his mom's house, they were having a Halloween party. And so, you know, uh, Chris actually got to attend very first Halloween party <laughs> at 11 days old. It was, it was so cute. But so it was a very, um, it was a scary time, but at the same time, um, an, an amazing outcome, uh, you know, everything ended up turning out perfect, you know, uh, Chris is now 22 years old, I believe, um, and just, you know, I am so grateful to the people at both hospitals that had taken care of me and my husband for being so amazing and supportive and there for me because it was a very scary time because I, I honestly, you know, when you're, when you're young, you don't think about mortality. You know, you don't, you don't really think I could die. You know, it, that, that kind of, we kind of have this 
I'm going to like live forever kind of thing. And so when that hit me and that doctor said what he did, I, that's when I faced for the very first time that I, I could actually die. Okay. So that's my little special story, uh, which is very special to me because I am so grateful to all of the wonderful healthcare workers and people that took care of us. So let's get to the giveaway. Okay. Oh, exciting part. So this is what I have that I'm giving away. I kind of want to take out the bookmark because because of the sticker, you can't, you can't see it. So I found this bookmark, which I thought was a very beautiful owl bookmark, right? And um, so this, and it has, you know, some special shapes on there as well as rhinestones. So this is the prize that is going out to this week's winner. So are you ready to see who this week's winner is? I know I am. Okay, let me get my phone for a second here. Right. I've already got the random number generator. I think. Oh, yep, okay. Now, here's the thing, guys. The last place that I stopped was at 254. And it is now up to 342. Guys, you are like, wow. I honestly, when we started this, I don't think either Mindy or I thought that we would ever have this many um, projects completed by people and submissions. And I just have to say, I am so truly impressed. All right, so here we go. I have it linked in. So let me hit the button. Okay. So, we got number 276. Uh, let's see. 276 is Linda Dot Bat. Linda Dot Bat. Woohoo! All right. So, Linda, I will be contacting you on Instagram. I got to circle this right here. I will be contacting you on Instagram and getting you to let me know. Uh, what your mailing address is so that I can get your prize off to you. Congratulations. Woohoo. I'm telling you, I have not, cannot believe how many that we have. Whew. Okay. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. Become part of the Diamonds family. We'd love to have you here. All right. So I'm going to leave you like I always do. Reach for the stars. Grab hold, hold on, and never let go. Until my next video, bye guys.